a pleasure to be here. Some of you were here last year and know that last year was the first year of our Save the River Education in the Schools initiative, and we have expanded that program um, very successfully in our second year. We are in schools in Jefferson and St. Lawrence counties and working with, student, with teachers in grades one, three, seven, and high school. And time is short this morning, and I made an executive decision, and the real essence of what we do, the real work that we do, is done by the teachers in the classroom and by the students in the classroom. So in the interest of giving the teachers and the students the recognitions they so much deserve, um, I'm going to turn this presentation over directly to Maria, and she will talk to you about what she's doing with seventh graders in Case Junior High School in Watertown, and then Nancy will share with us some of the stellar work that she's doing at Lafayette, um, just outside of Syracuse. And then, if there's still time, then I'll kind of catch you up on some of the housekeeping kind of things. So, great. Morning. My name is Maria Masaris. I teach seventh grade life science at Case Middle School in Watertown, New York. This is my eighth year teaching and my second year doing the Save the River curriculum. Um, Thank you. Um, if you were here last year, I kind of have a little bit of the same presentation, but because I get bored really easily, I'd like to, to kind of change up what I do every year. So, um, again, I first started out. Um, with what's called the anticipation guide in my classroom because I wanted to know what my students know about the St. Lawrence River, what they know about invasive species, and because I integrated this with my ecology curriculum, I wanted to know what do they actually know about ecology or remember about ecology. So this allows me to um, figure out what they know, what they don't know, and kind of gives me a little springboard to um, have conversations in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Next, of course, because science is vocabulary, I always have to go to the vocabulary, so we, we review a lot of the times. My students already know this vocabulary. It's not something that I have to teach to them, which is nice, so I make sure that we're all on the same page as far as vocabulary goes, because that's going to help us later on with um, talking about making food chains and food webs and what eats what and who eats what, so they really do need to know the vocabulary behind it. Um, then I give the kids a list of the plants and animals that they would find in the St. Lawrence River. They need to identify the, what each of the organisms eat, and then we make a human food chain where the kids represent a plant or an animal that is found in the St. Lawrence River, and they take a little string, and we talk about, okay, if you're a plant, what's going to eat you? And we wrap their fingers to the herbivores, to the carnivores, to the omnivores, so we get this big web going on in the front of the classroom, and we talk about what happens if something should die off, and, and we talk about that. And the kids love this. Not these particular kids. They're all hiding their faces because they don't want to put your face in. The next place I go is I talk about invasive species. This is a different thing that I did this year as opposed to last year. I found a great article um, called Pollution by Invasive Species. I chunked it up so the kids, certain groups of kids, read certain parts of the article, and then we did this great little fishbone diagram as a whole where we talked about what are the causes of invasive species, what are their effects on the St. Lawrence River, and they all have this diagram in front of them. And from there, we actually went back and reconstructed our human food web, and then we talked about if we added invasive species into this food web, what happens to the native species when they're there? And we found that the web actually falls apart is quite the impact for them. Sarah came, as she did last year, um, and she talked about Save the River and their mission, and the kids had some really, really wonderful questions this year, um, so that was great, and you know, it's good they don't have to listen to me all the time, too. <laughs> the culminating activity is an internet inquiry, and again, it's 21st century, and we need to do a lot of technology, so I changed it over for them again this year. The kids could... Um, pick one of the invasive species, there are certain questions they had to answer based on that invasive species, and then the project they had to create was either a voice thread, a Prezi, or a photo story. Um, I have an example. It doesn't play. This is called, a, this is a voice thread. 
If you go to the, the website, boysred.com, you can create an account, it's free. The kids would all upload pictures that had to do with their invasive species. And the great thing about this is they could add um, either text around each of the pictures they had, or they could speak into a microphone and record their information, and then it would play as a presentation. Um, so a lot of kids did these. And then back on the computer, I have some Prezi's going. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Prezi. Another free website, Prezi.com. I tell the kids it's like PowerPoint on steroids. It's a zooming presentation maker. It's one big um, background. You add your information, you add video, you add text, and then you link it all together, and it zooms around one to the next and around. Kids just think it's the best thing since like Prezi. They, they love it. So I have a number of presentations running back there if you would like to look at those. So in a nutshell, that is what I did for Save the River. Well, I didn't realize that I don't have a presentation except back on the computers back there. Um, my name is Nancy Hummel. I am from Syracuse, New York. So if you want to reference me, I'm Brunel. Um, and in the past five years, I've participated in a program at Cincinnati Zoo and Miami University, which is called the Global, um, it's a global ecological program, it's a graduate program. And I've traveled the world as a graduate student in the last five years to Argentina, uh, Namibia, uh, Kenya, Mongolia, and to Borneo this past year, learning about three main things. First of all, biodiversity problems, community conservation, how it's best done in each one of those places and then scientific education for children in particular with a focus on inquiry. And so, um, as a river person, I kept always referring all of my projects back to the river, and when it came down to coming up with a master's plan, I said it makes sense to put it on the river and what we're doing. But as a biology teacher in New York State, I am constrained by what we call the Living Environment Support <coughs> Curriculum, and I have to teach to a test that I don't know the exact questions until my children have it in their hands. And so I'm in a position where I have to really monitor what I do and think about how can I take the information that I can teach my kids and put the river into it and conservation into it and then make them pass the regions, which I do well most of the time. Um, we hope. So this year I chose three projects. The first project that I did was one that came from the actual boat trip that we took here with the teacher conference, which was on the common term. One of the things that we did is we looked at the common term. And one of my projects that my kids have to do, or skills they have to do, is they have to graph well. And you would be amazed how poorly they graph, how poorly they analyze data, and how poorly they think about what they've done. And so I took data from um, uh, common term populations in Ohio about 1970 to 1997, and then in New York. I gave them a reading selection, which is also a regions type question, had them graph the material, and then answer questions based on what was on the graph and what they could interpret from the graph, like why does the common term live, what's the problem, what could be a cause of their environmental issues. And then the last question on that particular worksheet had to do with what could you do to preserve nesting sites for common terms, and my kids came up with exactly what's being done by Save the River. So it's like, yes, they get it. So I give them the idea that they can also participate. They're very simple ideas, the netting, the building of houses. So I let them get the idea that they too can do community conservation. My next project was really huge, and that was very similar to what Maria did, which was about food webs. On the biology regions, there's always a food web. And they're usually so simplified and so generic, it doesn't mean anything. So I did the whole St. Lawrence River ecosystem, and I did like 75 food species cards for my kids, had them assemble the entire food web, and then I gave them a particular invasive species, and I gave them the trophic level of it, what it eats, and I had the kids wipe out whatever was wiped out. They then had to do a project similar to what Maria did, where they had to go and they had to research and actually prepare a presentation for their classmates. But I took it a little bit one step further. I asked the students, you need to contact a scientist. You need to ask a scientist, what are you doing about this, and what are you getting out of it? And in biology, they have to know about the technology that people use to study science. I said, ask them what they're using, how they're using it. We heard back from everybody. All of my students got a contact back from the scientists that they contacted. And we learned some new information about things. The kids then did their presentation, gave it to their classmates, and then they showed their particular food web losing their, with their invasive species in it, and then what wipes out what happens here in the river. 
My next project was one of my favorite ones. Um, I had to do a project on how evolution changes a population. And I went, muskies, of course, and the Save the River project where we had the catch and release program. So I, I made up cards called the musky game. And what the kids had to do is they had to fish for musky cards in a, in a plastic container, which I have back here, and they had to either catch it or and keep it or release it based on size. And they had to count what, how many of the small muskies, medium muskies, and large muskies they had when they caught and pulled as compared to if they caught and kept. And so they had to grab their data and look at, and then I referenced the Save the River Project and exactly what happens when you get your Michael Ringer um, uh, picture and your certification that you've released it on um, a muskie. And the kids could see that you could change the population size based upon just a simple catch and release game based on size. And so they really understood why Save the River does something like this. Again, many of my students, in fact, fish. Many of them have muskies in their family rooms. Um, and so it had a certain reference to them about what they do. I'm, and, and I was really happy with that, pro, uh, that particular project, and I gave that to also um, the teacher who teaches next to me who does the SUNY ESF Global Environment <coughs> course, and she had her students, that's a college level course that the kids get college credit for, and they did the Muskie game as well, and they got the same results. And so, they, for, they, so it works on a high school level, but also works on a freshman level. Um, of college level. That was a lot of fun because the kids all of a sudden understand what's a muskie, they understand what's a tern, they understand the food web, the spiny, um, the fish hook, the water fleas, the spiny water fleas. They get it now. They know what they are. They did not know what they were before. And I did have to track my data on what they knew and what they didn't know for my courses. And they really come up with ideas about what we have, what our problems are, and what they can do. Um, 
Mary Ellen Carroll is a third grade teacher in the Watertown City School District. She works at the Sherman Elementary School. And she, last May, um, facilitated a unit on the Muskie. And these were the essential questions that she presented to her students. This is what she wanted students to know and be able to do at the end of the lesson. Very structured, meaningful learning objectives. This was um, the participation survey for one of Mary Ellen's students at the end of the unit that she did. And so I had to question, hmm, the Save the River website was interesting. So um, we were not able to actually get into the school and do a presentation. And also the one that says, I paid more attention than usual because I like this topic. So I thought, hmm, I'm wondering why this student did not respond very positively. So here's what this student said on the back of the survey. I like this topic because there were animals involved with it. Also, I like that we looked at bugs. I wish that we could go fishing for the <laughs> So clearly, if we make this a little bit more hands-on and meaningful, I think that we will get those positive responses that we are looking for. And so part of what we're doing in this coming year is to really explore funding possibilities to incorporate an on-the-water or near-the-water experience for all of the teachers and all the students who are participating in this, um, in this project. I think we've just got a couple more. So here's another of uh, Mary Ellen's students. So uh, there were some. Um, and I, love, I just want to share with you some of the things that these third, third graders said. You know? I like how we learned something not a lot of people think about. So. That was something new and exciting that was brought into that classroom. And I think we just have two more. Um, I'm going to read this to you because you, it didn't stand very well. But I liked how you helped us learn about the muskie. Thank you. And I wish next time we can learn how they communicate to the river. So this is a third grader. Um, so think about all the thoughts and all, all the doors we're opening for these young children. And they're third graders. And so if they get to experience the same kind of exposure to Save the River when they're seventh graders in um, Maria's classroom, and then again in the high school, um, we're hoping that we will really create a whole new generation of river keepers who will look after it long after for long. So um, thank you very much. And I'll open it up to questions.
you so much to reach every single school district um, that touches the St. Lawrence River and that children in those districts will have some sort of a river experience either in the classroom combined with a possible field trip um, once in the elementary school, once in middle school, and once in high school. So they'll be touched three times by curriculum and at least once, if not more, with an on-the-water experience. So um, thank you very much to the foundations who have been so generous to this program because you're helping us get very uh, close to that goal. Um, I also want to point out that we have um, our sort of education center, um, which is on the back wall here. Um, so during the uh, breaks and during the, the lunch time, please take a few minutes. There's some laptop with presentations um, and examples of the teacher and student work. Um, and uh, it's a really great opportunity to sort of see a little bit more about what the teachers and students are doing in this program. So thank you very much um, to Kathy for helping to pull that together. <coughs>